Hey guys, this is Nick. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be diving into some FA Metaphose combos utilizing the brand new anti-human intelligence messiah monster out of Dawn of Majesty. I've had a few people come to me and ask me a few questions on how FA Metaphose in general plays and why messiah is so good in the strategy as opposed to playing Magician Souls, which was the card I was running in the deck before running messiah. Um, the reason why I decided to incorporate this card was not only because Souls is just really, really expensive, um, and I understand that a lot of people who want to try this deck out might not want to invest the money in Souls, and for a long time there wasn't really anything that I felt that could do what Souls did. Uh, to be honest, there, there still isn't, because Souls is just such an insane card. And the fact that it hasn't seen a reprint yet um, is just silly by Konami's part. Um, it's extremely expensive. I know it's been around $125 to $130 for like the longest time. Even the foreign copies are like over 100 at this point. So like there's really no easy way to in invest in Souls. If you want to place it, you're, you're going to be dropping like over $350 no matter which way you look at it. And that's just a lot of money to spend when you're looking at a budget deck like F.A. Metaphors where each card is literally like 25 cents or less. Um... So to me, it just didn't make a lot of sense, and I wanted to do something for my subscribers and my viewers who are watching this, who wanted to try this deck out for themselves, and give them a bit, a little bit of a budget alternative. But at the same time, I didn't want to bring them something that sucked either. Um, I still wanted, you know, to put a card in this deck that was going to be worth playing in general, and not just be like a throwaway. So when I realized Anti-Human Intelligence Messiah was coming out in Dawn of Majesty, um, I was extremely excited because it was a card that a lot of players were overlooking, and to be honest, they still are. It's an insane card. Um, it's a light attribute, cybers type, level 8 monster uh, with a pendulum scale of 0, and we'll start off with the pend effect. The pend effect is any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead, except monster cards. So pretty much what that means is any spell trap sent to the graveyard it will be banished. So it's like a macrocosmos for spells and traps. Now on the surface, that might not seem that powerful, but when you look at what decks are performing in the meta right now, you have decks like uh, Sky Striker that are seeing like, like fringe success at different events. Um, Sky Striker will fall to a card like this. They don't have an, without like specific hard removal, all their spells and traps are gonna be getting banished. Um, well spells, I should say, because there are no Sky Striker traps yet, hopefully. Um, but all their spells are going to be getting banished, and they're not going to have that long grind resource game that Striker is known for, while Messiah's in the pen scale. Um, think of a deck like Eldritch, even though I know it hasn't really seen any meta relevancy in a bit. Eldritch is a deck that really will struggle against a card like this. None of their Golden Lands or their um, Eldlixers are going to be able to trigger in the graveyard, because when they, as soon as they leave the field, they're all getting banished. Um, even a deck like Shadal Invoked, something that's seeing huge meta relevancy in the format. How are they playing through a card like this? The moment they fusion summon anything or commit to board, all of their resources, like their fusion spells, are, are, are banished. You know, Construct and Winda and all their fusion and all the bullshit that they do. None of their monsters are going to be able to recycle their spells and traps if they're banished. Same thing with Invocation. How are they recycling it? They can't. It's getting banished. Um, even a deck like Drytron, for example, you know, most good Drytron builds are only running their the one copy of Medionis, which is their ritual spell, I believe. Once they use it one time, it's getting banished. How are they recycling it to summon Herald, you know, for their follow-up play? They're not. Like, there's just a lot of interactions that I think Messiah has against the current format that a lot of people are kind of understating. And mind you, that's just the pend effect. It, it still has a monster effect, which is equally as good in my opinion. And that effect is you can reveal the messiah in your hand to add another pendulum monster that's in your hand or one card in your pendulum zone to its owner's extra deck face up. And if you do, you special summon the messiah from hand. So it's literally like a free extender. And I use the word free loosely because you do have to have another pendulum either in your hand or in your scale. But that's not a problem, because if you're playing Pendulums in your deck, then you know you're going to have quite a few of them in there, which means the likelihood of you drawing a Pend and Messiah is pretty high. Um, so, like, that's never going to be an issue. And even if, for whatever reason, you don't draw another Pend, Messiah still functions great as zero scale with a pseudo-macro effect. 
uh, in uh, pen effect, which is really nice. Um, but it's like a self-summoning extender, which is really, really clean. And in, in addition to that, um, if another monster is normal or special summoned while uh, Messiah's on the field, you send that monster or monsters to the graveyard during the end phase. That's, that's also really good. That means, like, if you commit this card to board, your opponent has to deal with this. And if they don't, during the end phase, whatever card they summoned to the field, if it's still on the board at end phase, Messiah is sending it. It doesn't target, it doesn't destroy, it just sends. That's a really, really good effect, and that outs so many different threats. Um, so I just think overall Messiah is a really, really cool card. I'm not saying it's broken, but I do think it's, it's a lot better than people are giving it credit for. And because of that, I felt that it was a great card to play in FA Metaphors, especially when you factor in that it's a now a zero scale, and we can pendulum summon cards like FA Auto Navigator, which previously we couldn't do, given that the lowest scale we played was a one um, in our deck. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some combos, and you guys will kind of start to see why Messiah is, is such a powerhouse in this particular deck. Um, so we'll start off with one field spell and here we'll do one field spell and let's do two metal foes monsters all right so let's just do this this three card three card hand i'm going to show you guys how this works and why we play fa metal foes to begin with um for those of you that don't know fa has a uh, four different field spells might as well just bring them all out there's hyper stadium there's city grand prix there's FA Offer Grand Prix, and there's FA Circuit Grand Prix. Hyper Stadium is always treated as an FA card in, in name, um, so it's searchable throughout all the cards in the archetype. For those of you that are curious, even though it's a UA Hyper Stadium, it's, it's always treated as an FA card. Um, what this one does is on activation, it lets you add an FA monster from the deck to your hand. So it's a plus one on activation. Then the secondary effect allows you to reveal a field spell in your hand, pay a thousand life points, and if you do, you can normal summon an FA monster in addition to your normal summoner set this turn, even if Hyper Stadium leaves the board. Let me repeat that. This is a field spell that is a plus one on activation. We all know how good those are in Yu-Gi-Oh! And in addition to that, gives you the deck a double summon at the cost of a thousand life points and revealing another field spell. Just let that sink in for a second. I'll say it again. It's a Rota on activation and a double summon, all in one card. If any other archetype had something like that, the card would be ban worthy. But because it resides in FA, it's okay. But because it resides in FA, it's great for me and anyone else playing the deck because it's a really good card. The downside about it is that it is the only field spell that does not have any effects if it's destroyed by a card effect. So because of that, um, I'll be excluding it from the conversation as we talk about these three. FA Circuit Grand Prix, FA Offered Grand Prix, and FA City Grand Prix, in addition to having their own individual on-field effects, all share the same graveyard effect. And that graveyard effect reads, when these cards are destroyed by a card effect, whether that's your own card effect or your opponent's, you can add an FA card from the deck to your hand, except a copy of themselves, respectively. Add an FA card. Not, an, not another FA spell, an FA card, meaning you can search an FA monster, an FA spell, or an FA trap. Uh, yes, there are FA traps, however, personally, I'm not playing them because they're a little lackluster, but moving on. That's a really cool effect. The fact that by blowing up any of these spells gives you access to literally your entire deck is really awesome. And all of them share that ability. And we played three copies of City, two copies of Offroad, and one copy of Circuit. So that's literally six different field spells that blow up and float on destruction and give you really good effects, which is nice. Um, also keep in mind that they don't have to go to the graveyard to trigger that search. As long as they're destroyed on field, even if they get banished by like a macro cosmos type of effect, um, they still trigger. So cards like Messiah don't hurt us in the grand scheme of things. If we use it to, you know, in our pen scale, any spell and trap will be sent to grave, right? Or will be banished instead. That's fine, because as long as we still blow them up on field and they get banished, it doesn't matter. We still get the search. And we don't care about recycling our field spells because we play so many different ones anyway. So I think um, that's pretty cool. But anyway, just getting sidetracked there, I just wanted to explain that little bit of information before we got a little bit deeper. 
So let's take a hand like this. Two metaphors, and again, it could be any two metaphors, monsters, because all the metaphors share the exact same pendulum effect, and that is once per turn, you can target a face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, you set a metaphor spell trap directly from your deck to the field. Every single metaphors in the uh, main deck has that ability, with the exception of Vanisher. Um, he's a little like a special one. He's got a different pend effect, but... Um, so if you open a hand of like any field spell and, and any metaphors, a cool combo what you can do is you can activate the City Grand Prix in the field zone, go ahead and activate the metaphors in your scale, use the pend effect targeting City to pop it. Keep in mind we have stealing in our hand still. So we're going to blow up our own field spell. Off of Silvered, we can search for an FA spell or trap. We'll grab like a counter in this case. City Grand Prix, because it was destroyed, will give us a search. So in this case, we'll grab a UA Hyper Stadium because it's always treated as an FA card. We will activate Hyper Stadium, searching out a copy of FA Auto Navigator, who's our main starter as well as our extender. Then we can normal summon Auto Nav, use her effect when she's summoned to add an FA Field spell from the deck to her hand. So in this case, we'll grab Off-Road Grand Prix, or whatever our missing link is. And let's take a look at this. We have Off-Road in our hand, as well as Stealing still in our hand. And we have... So, we have six cards on field. Well, six cards in total, excuse me. We started with three. We literally went plus three in this exchange. All we started with was with Silvered, Steelin, and City Grand Prix. And we now have Silvered, Hyper Stadium, Auto Nav, Off Road, Steelin, and a Counter. Like this deck pluses so much. Like it's literally plus two to plus three interactions on every card that you're using. It's, it's insane the amount of advantage that you generate off of simple combos like that. And the interesting thing is, is even a board like like this, you know, so we have off-road in our hand and a, and a steel in, plus, mind you, whatever the other two cards in our hand were, assuming we were going first. Um, and that's like how we build our boards, but let's let's take out the steel in, for example. Let, let's backtrack this for a quick second, because I want to show you guys how a card like Anti-Human Intelligence Messiah changes this. So instead of one of these metaphors, we're going to replace it with a messiah. So let's just say you have a field spell, a metaphors, and a messiah. How does this change the combo? Well, we're going to activate the field spell, activate the scale, use the scale effect to target the field spell, destroy the field spell. In this case, we'll set a copy of Parametaphors Fusion to the board. This is a fusion spell that allows us to fuse a Metaphose fusion monster from our extra deck using materials that are in our hand, uh, field, or that are face up in our extra deck as material. We'll resolve our City Grand Prix's grave effect. We'll search again, same thing. The only thing that changes here is that uh, we had a Messiah instead of another Metaphose in our hand. We'll grab a Hyper Stadium, activate Hyper Stadium, and with that, we'll go ahead and search for a copy of Auto Navigator. Okay. Auto Navigator will search us another field spell if we summon it. Keep in mind, we still have the Messiah in hand, um, which is, you know, can be used. But we'll go ahead and grab a field spell. Let's. Oh my lord. Why can I not find Okay, here. Off road. We'll grab the Off road Grand Prix. And now we have the Auto Nav on field. The Metaphor Silvered already did its job. It used this scale effect, it nuked one of our field spells, and we went plus in the exchange. So now what we can do is activate the Messiah in our hand by sending the Silvered in our extra deck, or in the pen zone, excuse me, to our extra deck face up, and special summon the Messiah using its own effect. So it's literally almost a free extender, which is really disgusting. And now what just happens is that, keep in mind we still have off-road in our hand, um, what happens is Messiah turns the Parametaphos fusion that we just searched off of our Silvered into like a 1.5 card fusion. Um, because now Parametaphos fusion is now live because we have the conditions on field to be able to fusion summon into a card called 
Metaphol's Mithrilium, which is a fusion monster that requires the Metaphol's monster and a Pendulum monster as material. Since Parametaphol's fusion can use materials from the hand field and or face up in our extra deck, we can take the Metaphol's silvered in our extra deck and the Messiah on field as fusion material since it's a Pendulum monster. And we'll go ahead and send our silver to grave as material, and then Messiah will go to the extra deck face up since it was used on field. And we'll go ahead and fusion summon our Metaphol's Mithrilium here. Keep in mind, we still have off-road in our hand. So now, we, we, we fusion summon into Metaphol's Mithrilium. And Mithrilium is a really cool fusion monster uh, for two reasons. Um, she has, for starters, two really good effects, and a really good stat line, too. I mean, 2600 is, is pretty big. But um, what's cool about this is her first effect, it is a hard ones per turn for her first effect, but she can target two Metaphol's cards in the graveyard and one card in the field. You shuffle the first two targets into your deck, and then you re return the card on field to the hand. What's interesting about this is that she can target any card in the field. She could even target herself if she wanted to. But what's cool is if you're going first, for example, you can target your own Hyper Stadium and add it back to your hand. That way next turn, you have it again so you can reactivate it and get another search to start your plays as a follow-up. So that's a cool interaction. Um, keep in mind, she recycles your resources, so like she'll shuffle back both the Silvered and the Parametaphos, constantly giving you fuel for your Metaphos Pendulum effects. But what's even more important is the secondary effect, um, where if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a Metaphos Pendulum monster from your graveyard or from your extra deck face up. What's cool about this is the wording, if it's sent from the field to grave. Your opponent could kaiju this, and it still triggers, which is really crazy. Cards that have this wording are, are so awesome. Um, but what we can do here is we can use Mithrilium and Autonav as link material and summon a card like Christron Halka Fibrax, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And what happens is that Halk will be chain link one, and because Mithrilium left the field, she triggers this chain link two to special summon in Metaphols. So that chain blocks the Halka Fibrax, making that so that it can't be ashed Help, ensuring that it resolves pretty much because the last thing that happened in the chain is the Metaphil's effect to revive. Um, so it stops your Hulk from like being hit with cards like Ash Blossom and, and other things like that, which is really nice. And it's the interactions like this that I think a lot of people don't understand. And mind you, this is we're going into a Hulk play and we have full combo already. We like from this point forward, we can amass go into Aurora Don, summon our tokens, get Despot One. We're off to the races. No pun intended. Um, and it, it's insane. And mind you, the only cards we opened with was literally one Metaphos, one Messiah, and a City Grand Prix. We opened with just these three cards. Not counting, you know, again, if this is a real opening hand, we'd have two other cards. But with just these, these three cards in our hand alone, we're able to make a full combo, which is disgusting. And again, even if you don't want to go the Halka Fibrax route, this, these three cards alone already gave you the necessary resources to summon your, your Synchros. Like with Mithrilium and Autonav already, together they combine to make a level 7. So you can go into like your FA Dawn Dragster, you can make your copy of When Pegasus Had Ignister, um, you can make Cyber's Quantum Dragon, well, like I was saying, the, the Dawn Dragster obviously, which is nice. Or because Autonav is an FA monster, you can activate that off-road Grand Prix you searched, sending Hyper Stadium to Grave, activate off-road. Off-road Grand Prix gives your FA monsters two levels during the main phase. So that instantly makes Autonav a level three monster, meaning that with Autonav and Mithrilium, you can actually Synchro Summon for nine or seven, because Autonav is three, Mithrilium is a six, and then you can Synchro Summon for level nine monsters now, like your Stellar Wind Wolf Rat or your FA Motorhome Transport which is really crazy. And then keep in mind, when Metaphol's Mithrilium leaves, she's still gonna float into something else. So, you know, she can revive the silver that she used this material, but keep in mind, she revives any Metaphol's card. So it doesn't have to be one that she used as material necessarily. It can be one that you already had in your graveyard or one that was already face up in your extra deck. Cause we play, you know, Melcaster. We play, you know, Silver, obviously. Uh, we play Steelin. Uh, Bismagir is, is a really good one. Uh, we also play Vanisher, who's really crazy. 
Um, when he's summoned by the effect of a Metaphors card, he can banish a monster on the field or in the graveyard. Like, there's just really, really cool plays and combos that, like, these simple, one, you know, two to three card interactions can bring out. And it's just something that I think a lot of people are undervaluing. Um, Mithrilium is an insane fusion monster, and Messiah is a really great pendulum monster. And I know FAs and Metaphors obviously are not meta relevant, but the combos that they can pull off constantly surprise so many people. Every time I go to locals, people are literally like in awe at this deck because they've never seen anything like it. And, you know, even if, you know, they lose or get bodied by it, they're all always intrigued and, and want to know more about the strategy and how I came up with, with the idea. Um, but like I said, I, I just think it's something that people should really sit down and, and, and consider because, you know, FA can make really, really disgusting combos, right? We can make all, all synchro plays for days because all of our monsters modulate their levels. Um, but keep in mind, we play a card called FA Hang on Mach. For those of you who don't know what Hang on Mach is, it is a level four wind machine monster who, mind you, he gains attack equal to his level times 300. He is inherently a level four monster. Um, he is unaffected by the activated effects from an opponent's monster whose original level or rank is lower than this card's level. Okay, pretty straightforward, he's unaffected by monsters whose levels or rank are lower than his. Uh, each time an FA spell trap card or spell trap effect is activated, you can increase this card's level by one. That is not a once per turn effect. So every time you activate an FA spell or an FA spell effect, he gains a level. And there's no level cap on that. These are the only cards, I believe, in the game that can increase their level beyond 12, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which is kind of silly, but either way. Then, that's not all he does. If this card is level 7 or higher, any card sent to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. This card is a walking, self-protecting macrocosmos who gains attack times his level. And we can normal summon it. And we play three of it. And we can search it. What the hell? Like, okay, game one, we comboed off on our opponent. Our opponent thinks we're playing a combo deck. Okay. He sides in Nibiru, he sides in whatever he wants to side in. Game two? Game two, normal summon hang on lock. Activate FA City Grand Prix. Hang on lock becomes level seven because the field spell gives him two levels and then he gains a level since the spell was used. He already has his macro effect. Also, City Grand Prix makes it so that he cannot be targeted by card effects as if that wasn't enough. So now he's a 2100 attack, self-protecting, untargetable, one-sided macro. What is that Nibiru doing that your opponent sided exactly? You tell me. Either way, this deck is, is insane. It has some of the silliest plays and some of the craziest monsters. Like this card sounds like something that you'd see out of like somebody's extra deck after they comboed like 15 different ways to end on something like, no, no, this, this is a card I can normal summon, activate one field spell and have a one-sided macro that with protection. Like th this deck has so many plays. Like it's, it's literally hilarious. I mean, honestly, you can't understate how strong a macro cosmos is in Yu-Gi-Oh. The card is limited for a reason. You have cards like D-Shifter or Dimension Shifter, for those of you that are unaware. That's a hand trap that literally ends people's turns. Banishing things in Yu-Gi-Oh that would be sent to the graveyard is huge because every single deck in meta relevancy right now uses the graveyard as a secondary resource. If you cut that line off, a lot of decks don't have longevity or follow-up plays. Meaning that if you can stick a card like Hang on Mach, which it isn't hard to do given that it has already inherent protection against monsters, and mind you, don't understate that either. Because I've had people who don't read things very well when I use this effect to gain a level, they try to effect veil this. They try to gamma this. They try to herald of the orange light this. 
none of those cards work because he's unaffected by all monsters whose original level or rank is lower than his. It's insane. Like, he literally cannot be stopped. And then once you get City Grand Prix out, he can't be targeted either. And it's just like, it snowballs. And then every single time you're activating an FA spell or trap or spell trap effect, he's gaining levels. There's been games where I've gotten Hangamok to level 15. 15. He was 4,500 attack. Like, what the hell? Like, I can't, man. Like I'm saying, I, FA Metaphors is a deck that's extremely cool. And I personally enjoy playing it. And I think it has really, really great combos. Um, but regardless, I'm going to end the video here. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys want to see more content uh, based on this deck or content for other decks. Feel free to, you know, throw something in the comments if you want me to try and build something. Um, but either way, I'll leave a link to my most recent deck profile for my FA Metaphors build in the description below. So go ahead and give that video a watch if you want to know exactly what I'm playing in the deck. But um, thank you guys for your time, and uh, hopefully this combo, you know, taught you a few things today. Have a good evening.